From the Oklahoma Newsroom, this is the Energy FC Weekly Update. I'm Jenny Carlson here in studio with assistant coach Danny Stone. Danny, thanks for joining us this week. You're very welcome. Good to be here. Sitting in for Steve Cook, which, you know, if you do a good enough job, we're just going to have you in every week. So. Well, I'd, I'd be happy to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure's on. Um, let's tell folks a little bit about you to start with. Um, you were in Colorado with the Rapids, which is where uh, Coach Cook was the last few years. But uh, you've known Steve Cook a lot longer than that, right? I have. I've known Steve for, for more than 20 years now. We've uh, worked together on the coaching side for uh, 10 or 12 years now. And uh, yes, we go back a, a long way to uh, first meeting in, in Phoenix, Arizona. Mm -hmm. uh, I was playing out there and, and Steve was uh, in the early stages of his coaching career. So we've known each other for, for a long time now. So when he calls and says he's coming to coach Energy FC in Oklahoma City, what was your response? What was that conversation like between the two of you? Uh, very positive. I, I, I was pleased for Steve with the opportunity, and, uh, and he had nothing but good things to say about the, uh, the club here. And uh, uh, as far as uh, an offer for me to join him, it was uh, a fairly straightforward decision, I think, from my side. And uh, again, uh, having heard very good things about the organization, it's, uh, it's been uh, fantastic since I've arrived here in town. And, uh, and we've, we've uh, spent a lot of time on the field with the players so far, and, uh, and we look forward to hopefully a very successful season. And now the games are getting rolling. You guys have got two regular season games under your belt. Had a, a game last weekend at Phoenix, your first regular season road game. It was a 4-1 loss and, uh, you know, had such a great positive outcome in your season opener. What transpired? What changed in that game? Obviously, a hat trick for, uh, for Phoenix out of uh, Chris Cortez. So a tough match up there, but what was the difference in, in your mind uh, between game one and game two? Um, well, I think it, it's obviously very different and, and perhaps more difficult playing on the road, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, we did come up against a, a center forward who on the day um, produced three very, very good finishes and, uh, and had an excellent game from an individual standpoint. I think collectively from the team point of view, we were overall uh, not too dissatisfied with the performance. We just uh, we lost out in some key moments in the game. And I think that was something that we've addressed with the players and, and the players have responded very positively in the days following. And, uh, and we have no doubt that the players will be, will be ready and prepared for tomorrow evening's game. It sounds like then that that's a game that even with a disappointing result, you've got to take stuff and learn from it, right? Absolutely, yeah. And Phoenix are a strong team. They'll be... Uh, I would think a strong contender for the for the Western Conference, and uh, you know we knew ahead of time that it would be one of our toughest road games, perhaps. And uh, like I said, we, we we weren't disappointed at all in terms of the effort and commitment of the players, and uh, and, and a couple of things that we will learn from moving forwards. And uh, and we're we're ready and looking forward to to a game tomorrow evening, which can't come soon enough for us. <laughs> I was going to say you went a week between game one and game two. Now you've got a little quicker turnaround, which. Maybe that helps after a disappointing result. Orange County comes to town for a 7 o'clock match on Wednesday night at Taft, a home game. Uh, you guys have had some good home success, uh, some success against this team as well, 6-2-1 and one all time and 3-1-1 one and one in Oklahoma City. What do you see as the challenges uh, of trying to get back on the winning side against Orange County? Well, I think to get back at home is, uh, is hopefully an advantage for us, obviously being at uh, Taft Stadium again. Um, I think in terms of preparation for Orange County, as I say, we'll – We'll hopefully correct a couple of uh, couple of uh, errors that we made and uh, produce a performance that um, we hope gives us three points in the game. And you know the quicker turnaround time obviously gives us a little less preparation time on the field. However, we've done a lot of work with the players in the last couple of days in terms of getting them physically and mentally prepared for the game. So we'll be ready, and uh, whichever players are on the field tomorrow evening, we, we're very confident we'll, we'll give a good performance. There has been 10 straight matches where Energy has gotten positive points at home. That dates back to last season. Is there something going on, or, or is that just a team that gets in its, its comfort zone and, and really plays some really good soccer? Um, I think it's, it's, it's funny how these things happen sometimes. You have teams that you play against where you, you tend, for whatever reason, to have a good record. And I think for, for us at home particularly, uh, you know, being used to the stadium and being used to the surface that we're playing on here and, and having trained a lot on it here preseason will help us as, as well. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's one of those things where you certain, sometimes you have certain teams where you tend to do well against them for whatever reason that is. And, uh, and we hope, obviously, that that continues for us tomorrow night. Definitely. And then a, a talk about quick turnarounds. You get another one as you have to travel for a Saturday night game at Fresno. It's a 9 o'clock start Oklahoma time. This is the first time that these two clubs have ever met. Uh, some Oklahoma connections, uh, Energy FC connections on the roster there. But is, there, is, there a, is that a tough thing, never having played those guys, to sort of know what to expect in that match? Um, 
A little bit, yes. I mean, we, we obviously do all the preparation work and we, uh, we, you know, we analyse ahead of time as, as much as we can. But I think, to be honest with you, the, the main focus for us is always our own players and, and, and us as a team. And I think if we produce performances that we know we're capable of, then the opponent that we're playing, whoever that might be, and whether that's home or away, will always be confident in, in ourselves. And that's really where our focus lies, is, is with our players and making sure that they are physically and mentally prepared for the game and, uh, and, and to give a good account of ourselves regardless of opponent. When you talk about the players being ready, I'm sure that the focus is next game, Wednesday night. Yeah. So you as coaches, how do you prepare when you do have that quick turnaround? Are you guys already turning an eye towards that Saturday match? Yes, we are. Obviously, we, we spend a lot of time preparing ahead of time and there's a lot of work behind the scenes uh, outside of the work that we do on the field with the players. Uh, however, the next game is always the most important one for us. So our attention is solely on tomorrow night's game in order to perform well and, uh, and, and win the game and get three points. And following tomorrow night, we'll then turn our attention uh, with more focus towards uh, Fresno at the weekend. This is really one of this club's toughest stretches of this season. Uh, three games, three matches in seven days. You won't have many of those this year, thankfully. But uh, two of those being road matches. What's the what's the key to playing that many matches back to back in such a, t a tight time frame? Yeah, well, it's, it's not an easy thing. It's a difficult task for the players from a physical standpoint. But uh, we have a, a squad of players who uh, will be called upon at uh, various points during the week this week and, and throughout the season as well. And you know, we've they've they've worked and trained hard through preseason. The, the six and a half weeks that we had leading up to the first game was you know, very specifically designed to prepare every player. And so when we, when we call on certain individuals this week who perhaps haven't had as much game time in the first couple of games, we're confident that they'll be prepared and they'll be ready. And, uh, you know, it's up to them to, to step into the team when called upon and, and give a good performance. But uh, the, the physical part of three games in seven, eight days is, is never easy for teams. And, and as you say, the travel involved with that also with flights and different time zones as well is, uh, is a difficult thing to cope with. However, the players are professional and they are prepared as well as they possibly can and, and help from as many different perspectives as they can to be to be ready for those games. One of the main jobs that Steve has tasked you with is getting guys ready for those upcoming matches, whether it be, as you mentioned, the physical or the mental or the game plan. Uh, is one more difficult than another just sort of getting through a, a seven day stretch like this? Is it more physical? Is it more mental? Well, what is it? Honestly, I think it's a bit of both. Okay. I think um, every individual player has slightly different needs in terms of, uh, of, of those aspects. And the, the physical part, I think, is an obvious one. The, the load on players to play three games in a week is a difficult one. Uh, and like I say, some players will adapt a little better to the traveling. They'll be able to sleep a little more easily on the road. Yeah. Um, so we try to make sure that that rest and recovery time is a, is a very specific and important part of our entire training program. And you know, we use some, some very, uh, very important partners with the club, with, uh, with our recovery. Um, performance for the players and we use float spa, fit spa for cryotherapy, massage therapy and um, you know we, we, we obviously make sure we take care of the players nutrition that's a massively important thing and again you know people that help us out regularly throughout the course of the season from a, from a nutritional standpoint with the players very very important to us as well so we make sure the players are both taken care of and, and also place a, a high priority themselves on understanding that part of, of their job as a professional player. I was going to say a lot of people might sort of think about, you know, ice baths or, or yeah. yoga or, yeah. you know, so, I don't know. But it does sound like there's a lot of those different types of options available to your guys. There are. We use, yeah. like I say, we use a, a lot of local help in terms of preparing the players and, and those recovery strategies that we use. And, you know, we're, we're very grateful to those partners that, uh, that, that give us fantastic service and uh, believe me the players enjoy <laughs> using their services as uh, <laughs> as much as anything else so we're very happy for the players to go in and, and see those guys we'll get a list of guys that get pedicures yeah. after we're done here <laughs> so we can use that on them later yeah, well yeah. coach thanks for coming in we want to remind people again seven o'clock wednesday night at taft and then nine o'clock saturday night you can catch that match uh from fresno on the usl's youtube channel again nine o'clock oklahoma time for that but you can always go to energyfc.com for all those details be sure to stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com every day. In the